I'm Troy Kirby with Linwood Today with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. The Senate Health and Long-Term Care Committee held a public hearing on Senate Bill 5441, which would provide more information to patients undergoing breast augmentation surgery. Times are, are changing, but as I've learned from some of the women that you will hear from today, some types of implants were known to have terrible impacts. Uh, that has been known for years, uh, and the manufacturers kept the products on the market. Other harmful interactions with uh, current products are known, but for too many women not carefully reviewed or explained by their surgeons prior to uh, surgery. Um, in 2017, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I opted to have a double mastectomy and breast reconstruction with Mentor Smooth Silicone Breast Implants. Um, they made me horribly sick. I had an entire team of doctors for my breast cancer, and none of them told me that this could happen. Um, I also never received the manufacturer patient information booklet that is supposed to be given to every patient. Had the doctor told me that they were made of over 40, medical, 40 metals and toxic chemicals like mercury, arsenic, formaldehyde, it would have been a hard no. Had he told me they could cause autoimmune issues, that would have been a hard no. Had he told me I would potentially spend the next six years in a state of physical and worse yet emotional agony, it would have been a hard no. My plastic surgeon chose mentor high profile saline implants he told me that the implants were completely safe and were lifetime devices. He emphasized that they were the safe saline implants and the only risk would be basic surgery risks and possible rupture if only if I had a high impact um, injury to my chest. Um, we appreciate Senator Wellman bringing this bill forward and creating an opportunity to discuss informed consent, particularly as it applies um, to breast implant procedures. Um, we do find that existing statutory requirements for disclosure are broad enough to capture the information required by the bill, so we don't feel that a specific statutory informed consent requirement is needed. Is the current law working, and could this not just be belts and suspenders? Can you specify what you mean by belts and suspenders? I'm sorry. Um, so belts and so, you know, men wear belts um, to keep their drawers up and suspenders uh, okay. just in case the belt fails. Right. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I pride myself that I don't want to put extra laws on the books. Right. Um, but some things, when we're hearing the kinds of stories that we're hearing, something's not going right. And I don't know exactly what that is, because according to you, there doesn't really seem to be much problem. And yet we're hearing from woman after woman. And when you start the discussion among your your group of girlfriends and you hear the other horror stories, then you start to think maybe something's not going right here. Maybe this is something that is a public health issue that we should be dealing with. So so that's I guess that's my question to you is. If, if it's not a problem, if there's already law on the book, um, you know. Yeah, I, I would definitely not say that it's not a problem. I mean, certainly you can't discount these women's experiences, absolutely. I do think it's also just a matter of education and the information that is available to doctors to, to actually have that information to provide to patients. So I think a really big part of this is, is while doctors are responsible for disclosing that information, they also have to know what that information is. So um, that's sort of where that ASPS checklist comes in. It is incredibly comprehensive and we will do whatever we can to make sure that they are um, utilizing that in, in practice and providing that information to patients before they have this procedure so that they can be an informed participant in um, their decision-making choices. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by Linwood Today, covering the 2021 legislative session.